There are places around the world where citrus are synonymous with the location. Think of the oranges of Seville or California and the lemons of Sorrento. And growing a lemon tree in the backyard has also become a tradition here in Australia. Most of us grew up with at least one at home. We love ours. And when our neighbours had some major tree pruning work done to their large jacaranda that used to cast heavy shade right over this part of the driveway, it opened up an opportunity in that this fence behind me now gets bathed in full sun all day. And that's perfect for citrus. And even though space is tight, that's not a deal breaker. Like these other established fruit trees, positioning the citrus along the driveway will require training their growth habit into a flat, almost two-dimensional form because they won't have the space to grow outward. While the main horizontal trellis lines are already in place, our new trees are young, so I'm installing some additional poles in a fan shape to offer up more options for tie-off points as the branches grow. I've chosen two varieties, a Valencia orange, which has super sweet fruit, great for juicing and eating, but it is late to ripen, and also Tahitian lime, which is a prolific cropper and perfect for drinks. Time to plant. Note the shape of the hole I'm digging. Citrus have shallow, spreading roots, so I'm preparing the hole around three times the width of the root ball, so there's plenty of room to backfill with improved soil. Most citrus are fairly adaptable, but they do need good drainage and fertile soil. So if you want to reap the rewards later, preparing the soil is a must. Here on Perth's coastal sand plain, compost is important for improving moisture retention. And pelletised manure is a good source of much needed nutrients. A good soaking will help to settle the soil around the root ball and a layer of mulch will protect those shallow roots. Be sure to keep it away from the trunk to reduce the risk of rot. You can see what I've done here. I've orientated the tree so the flat side, which doesn't have any branches growing from it, faces the back. And then this central leader here will eventually be trained up this central stake. And the side branches, well, they'll be trained back against these diagonal stakes. Now, it might seem that I've planted it quite far off the trellis. Now that's important because the trunk is only small now, but as this tree grows and fills out, it'll end up with quite a girth. And you want to make sure that that never pushes up against the wall or the fence. Not all trees come from the nursery perfectly shaped for trellising, like this line, but that's okay. It's just a matter of identifying which branches you want to keep to grow to a two-dimensional plane, and the others can be removed. With regular watering and fertilising, these trees will fill out their trellis in no time. And from there, it's just a matter of regular pruning and training to keep them to size and shape. Follow the simple tips and you'll be enjoying your own homemade mojitos in no time.